Have you ever found yourself wandering through the labyrinth of a modern shopping mall and wondered where this concept originated? The answer might surprise you. It's not America in the 1950s, it's not even Europe during the Industrial Revolution. No, the concept of a shopping mall goes much further back in time. It takes us to the grandeur and innovation of ancient Rome. The ancient Romans, known for their pioneering contributions in law, politics, and engineering, were also the trailblazers in shopping. They were the first to introduce the concept of a shopping mall. Imagine yourself in ancient Rome, a city of a million people, the first of its kind. The streets are bustling with activity. Chariots rumble down the stone-paved roads, vendors call out to passers-by, showcasing their goods. The air is filled with the aroma of freshly baked bread and the distant sound of the forum's lively debates. In this vibrant city, markets and trade were not just about buying and selling goods, they were the lifeblood of the society, the heartbeat of the city. Markets were places where news was exchanged, where political debates took place, and where the latest fashions from across the empire were on display. They were the social and cultural hubs of the city. Let's take a closer look at these markets, the epicenter of Roman daily life, and the precursors to our modern shopping malls. Welcome to the Roman Marketplace, or the Forum as it was known. This was the heart of the city, a bustling hub of activity where goods from all corners of the vast Roman Empire were bought and sold. Picture stalls overflowing with a variety of goods, from locally grown fruits and vegetables to exotic spices brought in from the east, from finely crafted jewelry to luxurious textiles imported from Egypt and the Far East. Shopping in the marketplace was not just a simple transaction, it was a game of strategy and negotiation. Prices were not fixed and bargaining was the norm. Imagine a lively exchange between a shopper and a vendor, each trying to get the best deal, their voices adding to the cacophony of the marketplace. Enter Trajan's market, or as the Romans called it, Mercatus Traiani. This large complex of ruins in Rome, located opposite the Colosseum, is considered by many to be the world's oldest shopping mall. Built between 100 to 110 AD by Apollodorus of Damascus, a trusted architect of Emperor Trajan, this multi-level structure housed over 150 shops and offices, but it wasn't just a place for commerce. The arcades in Trajan's market are now believed to have been administrative offices for Emperor Trajan himself. The market was a marvel of Roman engineering and architecture, it was constructed primarily out of brick and concrete, with delicate marble floors adorning some of the spaces. The grand hall of the market was roofed by a concrete vault raised on piers, allowing air and light into the central space. The market was not just a place for buying and selling goods, it was also a social hub, where free wheat was once distributed to the people of Rome. Interestingly, the road cutting through Trajan's market is part of the Via Biberatica, which translates from Latin as the drink road. This street was the location for several of the Roman taverns and grocers' shops in the area. In many ways, Trajan's market set the standard for the shopping malls we know today. It was a place where shopping was not just a necessity, but an experience. History has left us with fascinating accounts and artifacts that give us a glimpse into shopping in ancient Rome. For instance, the Edict on Maximum Prices, issued by Emperor Diocletian in 301 AD, provides a detailed list of maximum prices for over a thousand products. These products included various food items, clothing, freight charges for sea travel, and even weekly wages. One of the most interesting items listed in the edict is the price of a pound of purple dyed silk, which was set at 150,000 denarii. To put that into perspective, that's the same price as a lion. This gives us an idea of the value placed on luxury goods in Roman society. We also have physical artifacts that provide a snapshot of Roman shopping habits. For example, fragments of pottery have been found with shopping lists written on them. These lists include everyday items like bread, eggs and wine, showing us that some aspects of shopping haven't changed much in thousands of years. These accounts and artifacts are like time capsules, offering us a glimpse into the daily life of ancient Romans and their shopping habits. Fast forward to the present day. How does our shopping experience compare to that of the Romans? In many ways, it's not so different. Just like in Trajan's market, our modern malls are places where we not only shop but also socialize, but there are also differences. For one, our markets are global. We can buy products from all over the world without leaving our city, let alone our homes. And thanks to online shopping, we can even shop without leaving our couch. Yet despite these differences, the basic concept remains the same. 
Whether it's a marketplace in ancient Rome or a shopping mall in the 21st century, these places are about more than just commerce. They are social hubs, places of interaction and exchange. So there you have it. The next time you walk into a shopping mall, remember that you're participating in a tradition that goes back thousands of years to the bustling markets and grand shopping arcades of ancient Rome. From the lively forums to the innovative Trajan's market, the Romans were pioneers in creating shopping experiences that were about more than just commerce. They were about community, culture, and connection. And in many ways, that legacy lives on in our shopping habits today. <music>